Okay, this is Math 1090, section 1.7 on fitting linear models to data. Okay, we'll start with the definitions. A scatter plot shows the relationship between two quantities. A scatter plot is a great way to explore data. As soon as you get a data set that you want to learn a little bit more about, the first thing you should do is create a scatter plot of that data. Okay, scatter plots refer to data sets where you have two numerical values related to each other. Okay, you put one value on the uh, count one column of values counts as the, your x coordinates, and your other column of value will, of values counts as your y coordinates. And so you get all these x y coordinate pairs, and you can plot them, and then often what we want to look for is to see if there's some kind of trend to our data like uh, does one variable increase as the other variable increases or vice versa does one variable decrease as the as one variable increases okay um, some more vocabulary uh, we we give names to the x and y values we call them the y value we call that the response variable and the x variable we call that the explanatory variable so the idea is hopefully the uh, coordinate that we're putting on the x-axis explains the, uh, the variation in the response variable or the variable we're putting on the y-axis so the response variable is the variable that we would like to be able to predict and may be explained by the value of a another variable, the explanatory variable, hopefully. Um, the explanatory variable is the variable that may explain the value of the response variable, also called the predictor variable. We usually use x for that. Okay, and then a least squares regression line is the line that best fits the trend shown in the scatter plot. Okay, so in the graph here on the picture, we have a whole bunch of data points, and then we have this orange line that uh, goes through those data points. Um, that's the a trend line, and if it's the the line that best fits the data we call that the least squares regression line why is it called least squares well you have all these points right and they're some distance away if we just draw vertical distances to the to the line right some of them are above some of them are below and what we want to do is come up with a line that takes all those distances and minimizes them somehow well if we take the y distance down to the point on the line that would correspond with that x, the x coordinate of the point we're looking at, then we may get a positive or negative value. And so if we were to add all those up, we would get cancellation. So what we do instead is we take those, those differences in y coordinates, which could be positive or negative, and then square them, okay, so that they're all positive. And then the idea is what you want to do is uh, minimize the area of all those little squares. Okay, you want to pick the line that goes through that's close to as many of your data points as possible such that the little squares you get from those lines that you draw down from the data point to the line, uh, the area gets minimized. Okay, now that is a topic from statistics. How do you actually compute this linear least squares regression line? Okay, and it actually requires a little bit of calculus to do. So the mathematics behind it is not part of our course. Instead, we're just going to use technology like the calculator or Microsoft Excel to compute that the the equation of that line for us. Okay, but we want you to understand um, some terminology and some basic ideas surrounding it. Okay, um, and one of those important ideas regarding a linear least squares regression is the correlation coefficient. 
Okay, this is usually represented with the value r. The correlation coefficient is a value that measures the strength of the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. Quantitative just means they're numerical, they're numbers. Okay, so some properties of this correlation coefficient. Uh, this, this thing R, and it gets computed for us by the calculator or by Excel. Um, first property, R is always going to be a number between negative 1 and 1. Okay, When R is positive 1, it means we have a perfect positive linear relationship uh, in our data, meaning that as the x variable increases, the y variable will increase by a, uh, uh, a certain amount as well. But not only that, if R is positive 1, it means that every single one of our data points will fit perfectly on a single line. Okay, now that usually never happens. All right, part uh, property three there. If R equals negative 1, that means we have a perfect negative linear relationship in our data. And that means that as we increase the x variable, the explanatory variable, the y variable will decrease. Okay, so there's a negative relationship between the two variables. And it's a perfect relationship, so if, if, if r equals negative 1, so all the points will lie on a a uh, line with a negative slope. Okay. Now, typically, R is is usually not <laughs> one or negative one, um, but when the closer R is to positive one, the stronger the positive association between the explanatory variable and the response variable. And five, the closer R is to negative one, the stronger the negative association. Okay. Finally, number six there, if R is close to zero, this means there is little or no evidence of a linear relationship. Okay, data that has an R, a correlation coefficient of zero, it, if you plot the points, they'll just kind of be all over the place. They'll maybe be kind of an amorphous blob. There won't be a, a definite trend to the data. Okay, so here we have some examples of scatter plots and the correlation coefficient that you would get from computing the, uh, uh, the linear least squares regression for this, these data sets. Okay, so this, this far one on the, on the top left here, notice every single data point goes perf fits perfectly on a single line so this would have an, a correlation coefficient of 1, positive 1. It's positive 1 because notice that the line has a positive slope. So as x values increases, y values also increase. Now typically though, our data is going to look more like this second example that, has a, that demonstrates a correlation coefficient of 0 0.8. Okay? Clearly the data is trending upward, but not all the, the data points don't all fit perfectly on a line. And it, your data almost never looks really perfectly linear. Okay, and then as R decreases and gets closer and closer to zero, we say here, like we see here in the case where R is 0 0.4, there's still a little, you can see some trending upwards in the data, but it is much less pronounced than the, the two cases to the left. And then when you have an R value of zero, your data just looks like a blob of points. There's no trend, visible trend at all. And then similarly, we, we have the same idea over on the right-hand side, the mirror image here, except now we have a correlation coefficient that is negative, and so the, the, the data trends downward. As X increases, Y values decrease, and vice versa. If X decreases, Y increases. Okay, um, and then notice in the, the next line below, 
okay? Notice that the slope, so it's easy to get confused and think that, that this correlation coefficient has something to do with the slope of the line. No. Uh, your line can have any slope. What the correlation coefficient measures is how strong of a, a positive linear relationship your data points have or how strong of a negative linear relationship your data points have. Okay, so notice the R value or correlation coefficient for all of these data sets is one or negative one. Okay, all of the lines that have a positive slope have an R value of positive one. And over here, all of the lines that have a negative slope have an R value of negative one. Okay, all the data points fit perfectly on a line, but the slope of the line, the correlation coefficient does not measure anything about the slope of the, the line that fits your data. Okay, another important concept, this is a very useful idea, is the another idea from statistics. This is the coefficient of determination or R squared. Okay, so you take your correlation coefficient R and you square it and we give that a new fancy name, the coefficient of determination. But this is a useful value and what it does is it measures the proportion of variation in the response variable that is explained by the regression line, by the variation in the uh, explanatory variable or predictor variable, okay? Um, so I think an example will help set this clear. So we have an example here. So suppose we uh, have a linear regression analysis to determine how the weight of a car, X, affects the gas mileage, Y. Yeah, clearly, I mean, you would surmise that the heavier the car, the, the lower the gas mileage probably, right? Heavier vehicles tend to get lower gas mileage. Okay, um, and so you'd collect data from various cars and make a scatter plot of it, do a compute the regression line that goes through your scatter plot. And suppose we found a least square regression line with y is equal to negative 0 0.047. Oh, there should be a little x in there. Sorry, there's a typo. We need to have both variables, both the uh, response variable and the explanatory variable in our, uh, our regression line, right? So the line is y equals negative 0.047x plus 37.36 with a correlation coefficient of r equals negative 0 0.846. Okay, so yeah, the correlation coefficient should be negative here because as weight increases, mileage decreases. So there's this n negative relationship between the two variables. As one increases, the other decreases and vice versa. Okay, so then if we take that R value, the correlation coefficient, and square it, you'll see that R squared is about 0 0.716. And this tells us that 71.6% of the variation in mileage is due to the variation in weight. Okay. Now, what, what this means is that not all of the variation in mileage can be explained by the weight of the car, but 7 tenths of it, a little more than 7 tenths of that variation is due to variation in the weight, okay? There's other factors too, like how aerodynamic your car is, uh, the rolling resistance of the tires and the axles and such, okay? But clearly the weight of the car has a, a major, is a major factor here. All right, you see here some uh, boxes with instructions on how to create scatter diagrams and how to do a linear regression using a TI-84 plus calculator or TI-83 and also using Excel. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go in 
read through this you can do that on your own but I am going to demonstrate how to do both today also there is a video there you can watch on how to compute a linear least squares regression in Microsoft Excel okay first exercise your Fair Isaacs Corporation or FICO credit score is used to determine your credit worthiness. It is used to help determine whether you qualify for a mortgage or credit. FICO scores have a range of 300 to 850 with a higher score indica indicating a better credit history. The following data represents the interest rate or percentage a bank would offer on a 36 month auto loan for various FICO scores. So we're asked to do some things with this data. First we're asked to create a scatter plot and draw a reasonable trend line. So let's demonstrate how to do that on the calculator. Um, what we want to do is we want to hit click on the stat button okay and then you see across the top of the calculator you'll see edit calc and tests well we need to enter the data in first before we can do anything so we want to edit our data so click on one or just hit enter there and um, you can see I've already um, entered in this data okay for the sake of time but just to show you how this all works, I will re-enter the first column of data here. Suppose you want to delete a column of data though. How do you do that? Well, you cursor, you use these, uh, the four arrow keys to cursor up until the, the column header for that list. So L1, L2, L3, these, stands for, these stand for lists. Okay, let me make this so you can see it a little bit better. So I've got list one here. It's got some values in it. Uh, if, if I want to clear it out though, I just put my cursor up until the header is highlighted and then I click the press the clear button. Okay, and, and now I've got to press enter to clear it out. Okay. And and now I can put data in. Let's see. Now what is my data I want to put in? it's 545 and then when you hit enter it just moves the cursor down to the next line you can just put the next number in 595 640 uh, 675 7 oops 705 and 750. So this first column, uh, I'm just taking these values uh, from the table. These are the credit scores, the FICO scores. Okay, and the idea is that there's a relationship here between credit score, the credit score that FICO reports to your bank and the interest rate that the bank will be willing to loan you uh, give uh, give you a car loan at okay so I've put this second column of numbers these interest rates as percentages into list two in my calculator okay so now part a we want to create a scatter plot of this data so uh, the four keys here at the top of your calculator, the Y equals window, zoom, trace, and graph, these are all, oops, these are all related to, let me quit out of that, these are all related to graphing functions and features on your calculator. We'll talk about them as we go through the course, but uh, as you can see, the, the first key there, the Y equals key, this, this is what we're going to use to determine what we're plotting okay now the y equals key is where you put functions in often one of the most common things you want to use a graphing calculator for is to graph a function right 
well, we don't exactly have a function here. We just have data, right? So we want to do a statistical type of plot. And so if you see right above the y equals key, you see in blue, it's uh, the word stat plot for statistics plot. So that's what we want to do. A scatter plot is the statistical plot. So we want to hit the second key, second or the function key, and then hit the y equals key to open the stat plots menu. Um, and then yours will probably, all the plots will be off if you have a new calculator or you've never used the stat plots before. Um, but we just want to, if, if you have any of these on, I would press four plots off. I'll just do that just for, because I've got one of mine on. So if I press four, it's going to put this plots off command into the command window. And now if I just hit enter, it's going to, I hit enter twice, but it uh, evaluates that command and it erases all the plots from the graphing window. Okay. So, but let's go back to the stat plot menu now. And what I want to do is I want to go into plot one. And there's three plots here. We can overlay multiple plots on the same screen, which can be kind of useful, but we're not going to do that right now. So we're just going to use plot one. The cursor is blinking there on top of the on and off. I want to hit enter to toggle that to on. I want to turn this plot on. Okay, and then if I use the cursor keys to move down, I've got a couple options here for statistical plots. The first one is a scatter plot. This second one here, this, let me make this a bit bigger for you guys. Whoops. Okay, the second one here is a, a line plot. The next one is a histogram. This is a box and whisker plot. This is just a very standard, simple box plot. And then a cumulative distribution function plot. We won't be doing, we're just going to use scatter plots in this, in this course. So that's already, notice it's already highlighted. So I can just hit enter and it will, oh, well I got a cursor down. Oops. Okay, now my X values are in list one. So I need to change this from list three to list one. How do I do that? Well, if you look above the keys one through six on your calculator, you'll see little in blue up above them, you'll see L1, L2, L3 through L6. So that's how you get the symbol for lists. So I want list one, so I'm gonna hit second, L or one, and then I'll cursor down, and I want list two, that's where my Y values are, so I'll hit second and the, sec the two key to get list two. Then I can cursor down, I can choose a mark for the data points. This is what symbol's gonna be plotted to represent each data point. Um, maybe we'll just do a little square. I like that. Let's hit enter. And then, um, you know what I like to do for my data? I like to, actually I like to make it red. So I'm going to cursor to red. So you can change the color here as well. Great. So we've told it, the calculator where our data is, how we want it plotted, and some you know, graphical aspects of how we want it plotted as well. Now, to actually view the plot, you would use the window key or the zoom key. The zoom key on your calculator is good for choosing a viewport of your graph or plot or data that uh, is appropriate. So if we click on zoom, there's several different kinds of zoom you can do, but usually this is what you want to do when you first plot, uh, create a plot or graph. You want to use one of these zooms to kind of get just a basic view or window of the of the of the graph. Okay, uh, and when you're doing any kind of statistical plotting, you almost always want to use the zoom stat, which is choice nine at the bottom there. You can cursor down all the way and then hit enter down to the nine and hit enter or you can just hit nine on your keyboard okay now I've I've also got a function being graphed in here as well so I'm gonna go I'm gonna hit the Y equals button 
you can see y2 has a function in there let me go and clear that out I cursor down to y2 and I hit clear and enter okay now if, if I go I'm not gonna I don't need to go to zoom stat anymore I just hit the graph button and it will it's removed that other graph and I just have my data points let's see as your FICO score increases the interest rate at which the bank is willing to loan you money decreases as your so they, there's an inverse or negative correlation between these these uh, values FICO scores and per interest rate per, as a percentage let's do this I want to get that graph into my uh, document here let's delete that for some so I'm just going to take a picture of that graph and pull it over to here and close that okay and then move that oh that looks good okay we've got a, a basic scatter plot here and we want to draw a reasonable trend line on that so uh, let's see here let me get the ruler and oh we're just gonna eyeball something that looks pretty reasonable to me okay great part A is done okay part B find the regression line and the correlation coefficient to determine the relationship between a person's credit score X and the interest rate they would be offered Y okay so the calculator will do this for us and how do we go about doing this well we want to click on the stat we want to go to the stat menu again we already have our data in there so I'm going to cursor over to the calc tab in this menu and what I want to do is choice number four there the lin reg or linear regression and it has in parentheses there ax plus b so it's going to get the equation of a line in slope intercept form ax plus b so I just hit four okay and to do a linear regression I need to tell it where my data is okay because maybe I want to do a linear regression for the graph I just made maybe I want to do a linear regression for some other data but so my X list again is in list one so I hit second and one and then down my Y values are in list two uh, I we can always skip using a frequency list in this course and do I want to store the regression equation? Yeah, I do. Okay, because that's going to allow me to plot it on the same axes as the scatter plot. So how do I do that? Well, I I click on the vars button. Okay, and I want to cursor over to y vars. I want to hit number one for function. This is how I get to the y1s, y2, y3, all these functions that are in that accessible under that y equals key. y1 function will work just fine. So I'll hit one. Okay, great. So I'm going to store the regression equation in the symbol y1. Cursor down and hit enter to calculate. And there we go my a value is negative 0.076 my b value is about 61.37 okay great um, so let's write that down let's see so our line would be y is equal to about negative 0 point zero seven and then there's always the question how many digits of precision do I need well the answer is it depends 
right? It depends on the context of your problem. But typically for five digits of precision, you'll probably be okay. It, um, so I'll, I'll use five digits of precision. So that would be seven, six, three, six, nine. Okay. We don't count leading zeros in our digits of precision. So seven, six, three, six, nine, that's five digits of precision times X plus the B value. The B value is, again, I'll use five digits of precision. So 61.369. There we go. Okay. Uh, but it also asks us to determine the correlation coefficient. Um, how do we get that? Well, um, if you've never used done statistics on a, your TI-84 calculator before, it won't compute this value for you by default because it doesn't, you know, this calculator is used for pedagogical reasons and we don't want to overwhelm students with superfluous data and symbols that they might not need. So um, uh, what the calculator has is this way of turning what they call diagnostics on so that you can get more data when you compute the linear regression. Sometimes you'll want the R, the correlation coefficient, and the coefficient of determination, uh, but sometimes you don't. So we want it though. So how do we get it? Well, what we need to do is we need to run this function called diagnostics on or diagnostic on to just set a, a little configuration or a Boolean value in the calculator's memory to tell it, hey, when you do a linear regression, compute the correlation coefficient and the coefficient of determination as well. So how do we get the, to that function? Well, we get to the function via the catalog. And if you look above the zero key at the bottom of your calculator, you'll see the word catalog written in blue. Okay, so if I hit the second key, the function key, and then hit zero, it's going to take me to the catalog. Now, I'll make this bigger. If you look over here in the top right corner, you'll see there's a little A next to the battery. That means it's in alphabetical mode. So if I hit one of the keys that corresponds with a letter of the alphabet written in green, then it'll take me to that section in the catalog. Diagnostic on begins with diagnostic begins with a D, so I want to go to the D section of the catalog. So I hit the X to the negative one button because there's a D above that. Okay, so there we go. I'm in the D. All the functions that begin with the letter D, I got to get to diagnostic. So I'm going to scroll down a bit here, and there we go. I'm at the diagnostic on. Okay, if I hit enter, this will paste this function into the command window. If I hit enter again, it will execute that function. There we go, done. The diagnostics are now on. Now, when I go to stat and calc and linear regression, um, let's see, we want the list one and list two is correct. We want to store the regression equation in a Y bar a function y bar into y1 and cursor down calculate now notice that it can also computed the r and r squared values for us okay so r is negative 0 0.976 Okay, so this correlation coefficient, notice it's very close to negative one. It's not quite negative one. That means there is a strong negative relationship between the data values. And they're very close to actually fitting on a single line. Notice how linear the data did look. Okay. 
So, part C, what does the model predict will be the offered interest rate for a person with a credit score of 800? All right, what we do is we plug in what this function does now, remember, is it you put in a credit score and it gives you the percent, the interest rate as a percent that will be offered to that person seeking a loan, an auto loan. So we need to compute negative 0 0.076369 times 800 plus 61.369. All right, so let's. Oh, an important thing too, I, I think I've already done it once or twice, is that to get out of these menus on your calculator, you can always use the quit feature, which is above the mode key on your calculator, right next to the blue function key. So it's quit is right there. Quit takes me back to the command window. So I want to compute this expression. I have Make sure I use the unary minus, okay, not the binary minus. So negative 0 0.076369 times 800 plus 61.369. get 0 0.2738. Now remember, this gives us the interest rate as a percentage. So this, I don't have to multiply this by 100 to get the percentage. It's already a percentage. So that's an extremely low interest rate, isn't it? 0. Point, about 0.3 percent less than that. That would be great. All right. Um, you know, while we're at it, I I saved the uh, the function in the calculator's memory, so we should graph it on the scatter plot and see how close my trend line that I drew by hand is to the actual trend line that the algorithm, the linear least squares regression algorithm, gives us. So how do we do that? Well, I want to go to stat plot. And yep, it's already on. And it if there's a function in the well the, uh, the other functions, it will graph that as well. So I can just go to zoom, zoom stat. And there we go. We see the the blue line is the trend line, the linear least squares regression line, and then the red points are my scatter plot. And I want to show you something really useful that the calculator can do, and that is you can um, you can investigate the points in your graphs, in your plots, by hitting the trace key. So we hit trace, and it brings me to, notice it's highlighted, let me pull this out so you can see it better. It's highlighted one of the scatter plot data points with these little crosshairs, okay? And now if I hit the right arrow key, it's just gonna take me to all of the data points as I keep pressing the, oh, no, I've, that's, wait, no, it's just not detecting my finger press. Okay, so there we go. And here we go. Here's one of the data points. 640. So when your FICO score is 640, the interest rate offered to that person was a 12.218%. And then the next data point, someone with a FICO score of 675 was offered an interest rate of 8.612. And what else? A person with a FICO score of 705 was offered an interest rate of 6.68. Okay, 
So it, if you keep going and then you can go backwards as well through your data points and you can check, oh, did I put all these in correctly, etc. Uh, but what else you can do is if I now push uh, the down or up buttons on these rocker keys, notice everything switched from red to blue. That's because it's now, the cursor is now uh, tracing the, the second, the graph of the line. Okay, now if I push the right arrow key, the X just moves along that line. Okay, and the more I hold it down, the more it moves. And you can see we can use this regression line to predict. So like if your FICO score is 729.5, then this regression line predicts that the bank would offer you a, a, an auto loan at a percentage of 5.657%, okay? So we can use this um, to answer questions like, for example, what does the model predict will be the offered interest rate for a person with a credit score of 800? We used the, 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 the function we got from the regression analysis to get a percentage of 0 0.2738, but if we go back to the graph, and hit trace and then go get our cursor on the blue line what we can do is just keep going down I think this will work yeah okay and I can keep going and down until my X oh no it doesn't let me go past 770.5 bummer hmm why is that well, it's simply because the calculator uses the, the Y values that have been computed to get outputs from your function. Uh, how can we give it more Y values? Well, we can change the window settings. It's very easy. Yeah, you see that the X max is at 770.5. If I change my X max, if I cursor down and change my X max to 800, and then graph again okay the graph will look slightly different here now if I hit trace and push the down on or up on one of the arrow keys and now I trace along that line since my domain or the window of the graph goes all the way to 8 I could change the uh, y the minimum y value of this graph as well and because and then we would be able to see the cursor but you see I get I'm able to go all the way to x equals 800 and lo and behold what is our that line predict it predicts an interest rate of 0 0.273407 so we were off notice in the one two three four we were off in the fourth decimal place um, or sorry no we're not off the calculator is off because it's doing a little bit of approximation for its points. They're very close. Okay, um, another way we could do this is we've stored this function into Y1 and you can see it's written on the screen right at the top there. The, all, the function with all of the points of precision so we could get an even more precise answer if we go to uh, well what we want to do is use that function in stored in Y1 to compute uh, given an X value and compute a Y value right so how do we do that well we want to calculate so that's in the calc menu if you look above the trace key there's the word calc written in blue and that's exactly what we want to do so we want to hit second and then trace I want to calculate a value so I'm going to choose one and I want to put in 800 for X now I hit enter and there we go it tells me what the Y value is associated with that that X value it's 0.273407 okay 
So that's another way to use your calculator to compute to evaluate this linear regression function that it computed for you. All right. Uh, next, part D. According to the model, what credit score would a person need to be offered an interest rate of 5.6%? So, here we're, we're being told the percentage rate, and we want to know, well, what FICO score is associated with that percentage rate? So what we do is we set the function equal to 5.6, and then solve for the x, the FICO score that's associated with that percentage. So let's do that. So we have negative 0 0.0766 nine times x plus 61.369 equals 5.6. And I just want to solve this equation for x. So I will subtract 61.369 from both sides. Let's see here, I'm going to quit out of my plot. Maybe clear the screen. And I'm going to do 5.6 minus 61.369. And I get negative 55.769. So we get negative 0.076369x equals negative 55. Point seven six nine. Now I divide both sides by the coefficient of x there. And I'll just get an approximate value for this. This will be um, so negative. 55.769 divided by negative 0 0.076369 and I get about 730. So a FICO score of about 730 uh, would result in the bank offering you an interest rate of 5.6 percent. Okay. Can we use the calculator to solve that problem for us? Yeah, we can. Okay, let me show you how to do that as well. So let me clear this screen. And the way you do this is you go to math. And it's at the very bottom of the math list here. They hide it from you. It's called Numeric Solver. So useful. So I'm going to hit Enter here. OK, I've, I already did this earlier. So you can see uh, what I want to do is set my the function in the variable y1 equal to the interest rate 5.6. So it doesn't matter. I'll just clear this out and then cursor down here. Come on. Oh, I got to put a value in first. So I'm going to put what E1 and E2 are just the, the, the two sides of your equation. And it doesesn't matter if I put, you know, y1 on the left and 5.6 on the right or vice versa. It doesn't care. So I'll put y1 here. How do I get y1? Well, I go to vars. I go cursor over to y vars and I want the function vars and I want y1 so I hit 1. And now I hit enter and I got to change this to uh, clear that out and I'll change this one to 5.6. There we go. I want to cursor down to the OK button and there it's solved for me. Uh, oh no it didn't. I got to cursor down to solve and hit enter. Wait a sec. Um, maybe I have a different equation. 
equation stored in y1. Let's see what's in y1. Um, negative 0 0.076369x plus 60, uh, 61.369, there we go. That's correct. Okay, so math, numeric solver, y1 equals 5.6, yep, oh, This is not the solution. This is just a starting point for the numeric solver uh, to kind of, it's a recursive algorithm, so you have to give it a starting point, where to begin, and then the bounds are just, well, where could the solution be on the real number line? And we're not gonna, we could specify those as simpler, but that's just the whole number line is fine. So let's see here. We can, okay, maybe I have to press enter here, I think. Um, well, let's use zero. Let's try zero. Select variable, press solve. Let's try coming back in. <laughs> All right. Y1, enter. 5.6, enter, enter, enter. It is not allowing me to progress. Why not? Maybe select the. Okay. Ah, I've got to hit the graph key to get to hit solve. There, we, there we go. <laughs> yes. And um, the x value it solved for it was seven thirty point two five two. Yeah, which is what we got as well. We got a little more than 730. Okay, so the calculator can do these kinds of problems for you as well. Um, the key I was forgetting was that when you have these little, um, let me make this a bit bigger. When you have this kind of, what would you call this? A, It looks like a button, kind of, the solve button, but you, the calculator doesn't have a touch screen. So what it's meaning is you have to press the button just below the, the screen of your calculator that, that corresponds with the button that they've drawn on the screen. In this case, solve is right above graph, so you have to hit the graph button in order to actually have it solve the equation for you. All right, let's move on. That was fun. <laughs> okay, we'll quit out of the solver. Oh, I got and accidentally hit the mode key instead of the quit, so let's quit out of mode. There we go. You can set change different settings on your calculator in the mode screen there, but we don't need to. Next exercise. Apple's AirPods have been out for several months now, and a lot of data has been collected. The table below gives the relationship between the price of AirPods, which we'll call X, and the weekly demand, which we'll call Y. 
So this is the X column, this is the Y column. All right, so we have raw data. We want to uh, probably scatter plot this data just to get a feel for it and then find the linear model that best fits the data. <clears throat> then we have a few questions here about correlation, coefficient, etc. Okay, so what do we do? We go to stat. We want to put the data in. We want to edit. <clears throat> and you'll see I've already put this data in. Let me make this bigger so you can see. But I've already put these values into lists three and four. Okay, so that for the sake of time. So to get the linear model, let's do a scatter plot first just to just to explore our data. So I'm gonna go to stat plot. I'm gonna go to plot one and it's already on. I want to do a scatter plot, but I don't want to use list one and list two. I want to use list three for my X values and list four for my Y values. So I'll change this to th list three, cursor down, change this to list four, and everything else is fine. So I'll go to zoom and zoom stat. Okay, so we've got a different, a little bit different of a scatter plot this time. And we want to find the, the linear regression line, a linear model for this data. So we go to stat, calculate, choice four for linear regression. And I've got to change these lists to list three and list four. Oops. List we will never be using a frequency list in this course. I will store the right, uh, the regression equation in, I go to vars. I want to store it in a y var, one of the function y vars. Y1, why not? Cursor down to calculate, enter, boom, there we go. So the linear model is y is equal to negative zero point I'll use, I'm going to keep, the data we put in only had three digits of precision, so I think I'll use four digits of precision, one more than the data, so that we don't have to worry too much about round off errors. So this will be negative 0 0.4329. times x plus b. b is 279.4. That's a good rule of thumb. If your data has three digits of precision, keep at least one more digit in your model, your linear model, than the number of digits of precision in your data. Okay. Um, what is the correlation coefficient? The calculator computed that for us. It is negative 0 0.9753. What is the coefficient of determination? Well, it computed that for us as well. R squared is 0 0.95 So remember, what is the correlation coefficient? It's a measure of of how uh, of, of the whether your data has a negative relationship between the x values and the y values or a positive relationship. Our data has a negative, a strongly negative linear relationship in the data meaning that as the x variables increase, so as the price of AirPods increase, weekly demand should go down. That makes sense, right? As the price of a product increases, demand typically goes down. 
And what is the coefficient of determination and its meaning? Remember the coefficient of determination, since you're taking r, which is a number between negative 1 and positive 1, and you're squaring it, it now will become a number between 0 and 1. Okay, it's always going to be non-negative and between 0 and 1. So, and, and what does it mean? r squared here is 0.95. What that means is that 95% of the variation in demand is due to change in price. So we have a very price sensitive relationship here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we stored the variable. Maybe we should just go take a peek at the graph. Yeah, there we go. It's a nice little blue line on our scatter plot there. Anything else that we were supposed to? Yes, part D and E. Okay, what does the model predict will be the weekly demand if the price is 195? I can just use the calculate feature on my uh, calculator, right? So I go to calc. I want to calculate a value. So I want to put in the we're thinking of price as the input and demand as the output, which is a little different from how the economists often do it, but that's okay. So when what we want to do is put in 195 here for the input. And what is the Y value associated with that? Uh, turns out to be 194.99. So basically, so um, demand at a price of 195 is equal to, I'll put about 195. Oh, and this is in measured in thousands, so 195,000. Okay. Let's do this with the uh, the the normal approach, though, right? And use our uh, our equation. So let's see here. Um, negative 0 0.4329 times 195 plus 279.4. What does that equal to? Yeah, let's compute that. Let's see. So we have, make sure you use the unary minus negative. 0 0.4329 times 195 plus 279.4. That looks correct to me. Enter. Yeah. So we get 194. which is very close to what we got from the calculator. Remember though, in our model, we're doing just a little bit of rounding. We only, we're only keeping four digits of precision. Okay. And part E, according to the model, at what price would there be a weekly demand for 202,800 AirPods? So remember our our demand, the output of our function, is measured in thousands. So, 202,800 would be 202.8 in the units we're using, thousands. So, what we want to do is set our demand function, demand as a function of x or y. We want to set the y value to 202.8. Because 202.8 times 1,000 gives us 202,800. Okay. So let's write that out. Negative 0 0.4329 times x plus 279.4. Equals 202.8. So I'm going to 
to subtract 279.4 from both sides. So I have 202.8 minus 279.4. And I get negative 0.4329x equals negative 76.6. So x is equal to negative 76.6 divided by negative 0 0.4329. OK, so I want to take the previous value and divide it by this denominator. So on your calculator, if you just hit one of the, the uh, arithmetic operations, it will use your previous answer that you just computed as the first input to that binary function. So I want to divide, and notice it just puts A and S for answer. I want to take my previous answer and divide it by negative 0 0.4329. And I get 176.95. Just keeping five digits of precision. Okay, so what does this mean? It means that at a price of $176.95, we would expect a demand of 202,800 AirPods. Let's go check that out on the graph. Let's use the trace feature. I want to get my cursor though not on the red scatter plot points but on the actual graph so I'm going to hit the down arrow and let's make this bigger so you can see and um, yeah I want to see where Y is 202,800 or 202.8 so I've got to go to the left I've got to increase the Y values 201 202, 202.8 is what we want. There we go. That's probably as close as we're going to get. Yep, and it's saying 176 point change, right? So $176.81, but there's a little bit of error there because it's not a <clears throat> exact calculations. Okay, so, so the price is 176. 95. Okay, finally, what is the precise way you could do this using the calculator? Remember, we can <clears throat> go to the math menu, cursor up, go to the numeric solver, and hit our, we stored our function in y1 again. Oops. I want to set equation 2 now to 202.8. So I'll clear 202.8. Okay. I, hit, I want to hit the OK button, so I hit graph. And it's, oh, and it solved it for me too. <laughs> It, it, ch it chose a starting point. If I hit graph again, it solves exactly. Okay, and it used the point from the, the calculator, the 176.81, repeating whatever. That was from my graph, I think it got that from. Okay, but the precise value is 176.97. So I get, did get a little little bit of a rounding error here in the very last digit. I'm off by two cents. Um, but Okay, so maybe I should have kept six or more digits of precision. But anyway, that's great. Okay, uh, I want to show you really quickly before we end here how to do a scatter plot and a linear regression line in Excel. So I've already, nope, never mind that. <laughs> so let's
let's open Excel. And I want a blank workbook. And let's change the view so these cells are a little bit bigger. Maybe 100 and 50%. Okay, and I think I'll put this over on the left hand side of the screen and this on the right. Okay, and I want this data table. I just need the data table, so. Okay, so. Uh, the first thing to do when creating a scatter plot in a linear regression is to enter your data into two columns. So I'm going to put my x values in this first column. So I have 150, 170, and I just hit enter and it brings me down to the next line. Just hitting enter each time. 190, 210, 230, 250. Okay, I'm gonna cursor over to the next column, or mouse, and then my, my Y values are 209, 209, 201, 168. Okay, so I've got my data in a table. Um, and what I want to do now is I want to, oops, oops. Um, I forgot I can't use the pen here. So I want to select the, the top leftmost corner of my of my data table and then hold down the shift key wait a second uh, yeah we'll hold down the shift key and then just select the rest of the table so I've got all of my data selected now I want to go to in the ribbon I want to go to insert and you'll see there, there's recommended charts. Um, you see there's a little icon here with scatter plots. Yeah, I want a scatter plot. So there we go, scatter plot. Okay, uh, I don't need OneNote anymore, so let's just close that and I'll make that full screen. And there we go. And you know what, I think we can change the view back down to 100%. Okay, so there we go. I've got a scatter plot. How do I add a regression line and how do I compute the regression line for this? Well, in Excel it couldn't be easier. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You see this little plus sign. Sorry, if I highlight the chart here. If I select the chart, you see the little plus symbol next to the chart. If I click on that, you see at the bottom there, there's a checkbox for trend line. Yeah, let's let's add a trend line. And there we go. Boom, there's the trend line. Um, it, it by def defaults to a linear one. I want more options here. I want to highlight the data. I want my, oops, I got to use my finger. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, Series one trend line. There we go. So 
what I can do is if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see there's checkboxes here for display equation on chart. I'll select that and display R squared value on chart. That's the coefficient of determination. Okay, so great. Now I can highlight that and maybe move it. Oop, I don't want to write. <laughs> so I'm just going to move that over to this side of the chart. There we go. We've got the equation of the trend line. We've got the coefficient of determination. You can, by clicking on this, um, this plus, or in an older version of Excel, you, there's the add to chart feature. You could change the, the horizontal and y axis titles. You could change the chart title. You could add a legend, stuff like that. Okay. I'm not going to go into those details, but we'll let this suffice for now. All right. And that concludes section. 1.7